Hi, this is Michael. Just like to give you a bit of a rundown on a new uh, power box uh, that uh, RCC SKJ, in conjunction with uh, Ostar Models in Australia, are looking at uh, bringing out. Uh, if you've noticed a few of the other uh, reviews I've carried out on some of their products, uh, you'll notice that they were a lot larger unit. Well, this is just a, a little bit smaller, and. Uh, you, know, you could use it really as a you know, battery backup. Uh, I find it's got a couple of good features on it. I've given it a fair bit of testing just to make sure that uh, there's nothing that would fail on the unit uh, during the testing, and uh, no problems at all. I've found that the unit be fairly fairly stable. What you have is a uh, just a, a box heat sink. This one here I, I must mention is uh, for aircraft, as you can see, ALA power. Uh, it's called. Um, Adjust Linear Aircraft Power, that's the, the actual name of the box, uh, a little bit of a tongue twister but uh, uh, basically it's just a, a power box with a display on it, uh, it gives you a bit of visual indication and also an audible uh, alarm which I believe is an optional extra that you can get for these, uh, you don't need to have the alarm if you don't want to, but really uh, pr primarily it's just a, uh, a uh, dual battery backup uh, with uh, the ability to adjust it as well. So it's it's not, not a bad little unit, like I said, uh, would be good for uh, your medium sized models. What you, you have, as I said, is a heat sink. As you can see just here, is a uh, LED uh, display. Uh, just to give you the voltage, the, the voltage going in and also the voltage going out to your receiver and to the servos. Uh, what you will notice when you see the voltage, which will be at the lower end, if you've got it adjusted up to say uh, 5.2 volts, thereabouts, uh, that'll be the voltage to the receiver and to the servos, but that voltage, when you do adjust it via the little adjuster just here, just wind it in or out, uh, that voltage will increase to the servos and also to the receiver. So the output voltage is adjustable but it, all, it adjusts to the receiver and to the servo so just be mindful of that uh, if for any reason you've got a receiver that can sits around about 6 volts or thereabouts uh, and you want to wind it up a little bit higher for your, for your servos that, that voltage to the receiver will also go up. We have the dual Dean's connectors here so you've got uh, dual redundancy for battery power my suggestion would be to use uh, LIFEs, uh, say 6.6 .6 volt, uh, LIPOs uh, 7.4, and maybe even uh, take it up to um, three cell li uh, LIFEs up to about uh, 9.6, 9.8 um, volts as well. I don't see any need to go anything high, anywhere higher than that. You can see a little plug just here. That there is the optional alarm and also uh, flashing uh, LED that uh, you can uh, purchase for the unit as well. Uh, part of the display or the purposes of the uh, review I'll just uh, I'll leave that on as well. As I said you have your Dean's connectors, dual battery backup and a switch which comes with the unit. This switch is for turning the unit on and off and when you remove the switch by unplugging it, pulling it directly out or if it was to fail during uh, flight or operation, the unit goes into a fail safe and then um, basically uh, keeps, keeps going so you don't have to worry about it having a switch failure. Same with the, the batteries, uh, one battery fails the other one takes over almost instantly so there's, there's no uh, worry about redundancy in, the, in uh, that situation. On the back, it's very hard to, to pick up but just here you'll see a little bit of an indent and that there is a little button that you can push down and that button actually adjusts the minimum voltage that you would like the unit to be set to. So uh, for example you would like to have the unit uh, give you an alarm at uh, say 6.5 volts or depending on what voltage you, you want to run at say 6, 6.5 volts you can actually hold that down and while pressing it looking at the display you can then set your minimum alarm voltage. So uh, once the vo that um, voltage reaches that point, the alarm will go off, go off and give you visual if you're using one of these, and also audible um, alarm. So not a bad little feature. Running on this section, you'll have eight ports along here, or um, connections. 
Uh, they've got the little uh, Futa Futaba uh, tab in there, so you, you can't really uh, mix up which way you're going to put your uh, your servo leads in. What you have is the four one two three four connect to the receiver. The remainder one two three four they connect to your um, servos. Uh, so you've you've got functionality there for um, four outputs on your on your receiver and operation of uh, say up to eight servos if you were to use a Y lead. What I'll do now, I'll just go through a, a little bit of a run through on how to set it up and just give you a bit of a uh, display on uh, uh, what you need to do just to get the unit to activate. First thing I always like to do is to make sure my voltage is correct. So I'll just use a standard voltmeter plug into number one which is the receiver uh, output put on the batteries I'm just using uh, two cell lipos, uh, lipos in this uh, situation so we'll, we should get a voltage show up of around about six and a half maybe 6.7 volts all up plug in our batteries Which has been left turned on, but that's okay for the purposes of this. And I'll also connect up the uh, alarm as well, just so that we can have a little bit of indication as well. As you can see, what we have there now is the voltage from the batteries is running at 6.6, 6.7 volts, and from the uh, the output voltage, as you can see, these little LEDs here swap over as well to let you know which is which. Top one is for the uh, output, the bottom one here is for the input. We have 6.6, 6.7 and the receiver voltage and to the servos is 5.25 volts. Now if we wanted to we can adjust that voltage if need be just by putting a little screwdriver in and adjusting it down and adjusting it up. Just as you adjust it up you check to make sure that you are on the right uh, right voltage uh, setting, you know, whether you're adjusting it at, actually at the, the output voltage. So just be mindful of that when you do adjust it. Like I said, pretty straightforward to, uh, to uh, set up. I, I always like to just check to make sure that anything going to my receiver before I connect it in is going to be correct. So first thing now would be to turn the unit off, disconnect your battery charger, we know a battery monitor, we all know that everything's out all okay. Connect in the receiver. What we do need to make sure of is that we have our leads uh, com complete lead for say number one port on your receiver or out uh, output on the receiver. We plug into here for number one and that will also give us power to the receiver at that point. What we can do now, and uh, I've set it up with this unit, I have those um, leads with just the, the actual signal output which uh, just makes things a little bit tidier. Make sure I get the colours uh, correct and I'll hook in number one, number two sorry the red. As I say, with the little Futaba tab it just makes it a bit easier to uh, make sure we get the right ones in. And there we have four outputs on our receiver connected in. Then what I'll do, I'll just try out two servos, just standard uh, servos, I won't worry about uh, anything too fancy for the demonstration. And then we just connect them in one and two. Pretty straightforward. We then have another two, you can just notice it here, two other servo outlets here so we can operate another two servos. If I wanted to I could use a Y lead and connect in and uh, activate four Y leads there and that would give me uh, eight servo uh, outputs if I really wanted to. Okay everything's all connected in, we've got our servos in place Turn the unit off, uh, sorry, turn the unit back on. 
Turn the transmitter on. And there we have it. So what we what we've actually guaranteed there now is we're going we will have six point sorry five point two volts to the actual uh, servos, but we're also uh, assisting the the whole unit instead of drawing continuous current and voltage off the receiver itself and putting it under a little bit of load, especially if you were to run some multi servos and some uh, servos that uh, demand a little bit of uh, extra power. Uh, this unit here will actually take care of that. So what it's what it's doing, it's uh, being supplied the signal from the receiver, but the actual voltage for handling this and current for handling the servos is looked after by this unit here. So if anything's going to get hot, it's going to be this unit here, not your receiver. So less dr less power, um, I guess you could say, drain uh, on the receiver itself and it gives you a little bit more flexibility when you want to plug in extra batteries like I have done in this case here. And like I said, not a bad little unit, uh, works quite well. The, the other feature, as I said before, is on the back, just here. You can just make it out, there's a little tab there that you, you can hold down and by pressing it down, we can then look at what our under voltage is. And by holding it down, as you can see there now, I'm lifting that voltage up. Now because I'm actually at a higher voltage than what our batteries are putting out, once I let it go, we'll start getting the alarm come off. There we're showing that we are under voltage because I've set the voltage high on the, on the back end. So, just let it scroll all the way back round. You can't go back, you've just got to keep going forward until you get past your uh, 12 volts. Once it goes past that, we start off again at 4 volts and we can work our way back up. And what I'll do now, I'll just set it, say, at 5.6, um, 5.7 volts will do for this. And as you can see, everything's fine now. It's just giving us an alarm just to say that uh, it's gone back through the check and uh, the unit is now working. So battery voltage 6.6 volts from both the batteries and to the receiver and to the servos 5.25. If for any reason you were to have the battery fail you won't get an alarm to let you know that, but if you were to disconnect the battery, like I have done in this case, as you can see, it's instant and it switches over to the other battery, so there won't be any, any problem with an alarm there. If your switch was to suffer a failure as well, say in this situation, due to vibration or whatever, the switch was to uh, become damaged, pull it out, and as you can see, the unit is still working. Push the switch in unit is still working, turn the switch off, power down and uh, our unit's turned off. Like I said, quite, as you can see, quite small, uh, easy to use and what you can do, you can plug your main components, your main uh, flight functions such as ailerons, uh, flaps if uh, need be, elevator, rudder, uh, any of those major items that you would uh, be using, even uh, retracts if you've got mechanical type retracts you could plug into this unit and then any of the other ancillaries like your, um, th say your throttle servo or anything, you could just run directly off your off your receiver. So uh, yeah, like I said, uh, unit works works quite well and uh, easy to use, um, and I think it would be fairly good for uh, just a standard uh, everyday model. Thank you.